Okay, in this video, we are going to find partial derivatives of f of x, y, z. So it's a function of three variables, is z times e to the x, y, z. And you can see I'm using a different color for each of the variables. And when they're allowed to vary, I'll leave them that color. And when they don't vary, I'm going to turn them purple. So let's, uh, let's get into this. So the first one we want to find is we want to find a uh, partial x. So when we do that, we want to think of our function as x is the variable and y and z are just basically constants. So we found derivatives like this a lot in Calc 1. And so it's really just kind of a constant multiple rule. And then we're going to need a little bit of the chain rule. And so partial x is z, that's the constant multiple. The derivative of e to the y times z times x. So I move the variable to the end because I feel like you're more used to finding the derivative of something like e to the 7x. Um, so I just made it look that way. So the derivative of e to the y, z, x is going to be e to the y, z, x times the derivative of y, z, x. x is the variable, so y times z is a constant, so the derivative of that is actually just y times z. And then I'm going to rewrite this, kind of clean it up a little bit. So I get y, z squared e to the x, y, z. All right. Um, finding the derivative with respect to y is going to be really similar. So uh, this is partial y. So I'm going to think of the function as x is a constant, y is a variable, z is a constant. So we get this. I rewrote it again as e to the x times z times y, just so it's more familiar. So you can always do these little things that just make it easier on yourself. Or you can leave it the way it is and think it through. It's up to you. Um, so partial y is going to be, so z, the constant multiple, the derivative of e to the xzy is going to be e to the xzy times the derivative of xzy, where y is the only variable, so the derivative is just x times z. And then again, I'm going to clean it up, and we get xz squared e to the xyz. All right, and now we're going to find partial z, which actually turns out to be the most complicated of these, but it's not super complicated. So partial z. Um, so x and y are constants. z is going to be a variable. That's important because we have z times e to the x, y, z. And z times e to the x, y, z right there is actually a product, so we need to use a product rule. So a little bit of extra work here, but again, not, not really bad. So partial z. It's going to be first, which is z, times derivative of the second. So the derivative of e to the x, y, z is e to the x, y, z times the derivative of x, y, z, where z is the variable. So all that's left when you take that derivative is x times y. And then, so that's the first part of the product rule, first derivative of the second. So it's plus second, which is e to the x, y, z times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of z with respect to z is one, so times one. And then here you can see there's an e to the x, y, z in both terms. So I'm gonna factor that out because it looks a lot simpler if you do that. So I'm gonna have x, y, z plus one and then times e to the x, y, z. All right, so we found partial x, partial y, partial z. Let me box those so it's a little clearer. That's partial x. That's partial y, and that's partial z. So it's the same process. You can actually have as many variables as you want in here. Um, three is usually like the practical limit of doing these things in practice problems, but you never know. Um, so I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.